We are contenders to the worldly standards of people helped by God. Taking over in all spheres. Blessed with uncommon testimonies. Our stories are inexpressible. This is our Koza experience. We relocated to Abuja about two years ago. I've been married for 11 months, 11 years and five months to be precise. And since then we've been waiting on the Lord, seeking the face of the Lord all the time, you know. Uh, going through so many, uh, so many challenges on the way. You know how it is in this African culture. You'll be pressured here and there, here and there. For the past 11 years and five months, I've been waiting upon the Lord for the fruit of the womb and it has not been an easy trip at all. I can remember the first year, you know, when you first get married, the first, second month, third month, after maybe you are just still on honeymoon. I still felt I was on honeymoon then anyway. But by the fourth month, I started asking questions, you know. I started taking, uh, going to the hotel, say, Father, if you do this for me, I'll give my salary this month. If I conceive this month, I'll give my salary. And, you know, somehow, somehow, I did not conceive. I think after about seven months or so, we went for a test and the doctors brought out some reports that were rejected immediately. And I remember I told my husband something at that time, that what you cannot carry, don't even bother to carry it at all, I should just leave it for God. Within those 12 years, we did IVF six times with, um, with negative, very negative, very negative outcome. In fact, it's always like as if we are dashing money because we never got to the second stage of the procedure. Because after collecting everything, it will just come out as if nothing, there is no mature there, there is no, you know, a lot of, a lot of issues. There are many times I will go to places and I will see people carry their children and I will go back home crying. And I will get home and I will pray to God and tell him and say, Father, if you can do this for me, I will come back and testify to you. And you know, year runs into year, days into day. I mean, year into years. And every year, I, I keep on believing that God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. It was not easy at all, but my faith was strong in the Lord. There is this pressure from everywhere, you know. What have you been doing? What else can you do? Where can you go? People advising you to go to prophets, people advising you to go to many places. But through it all, God has sustained us. I can, I can, that, that is even one of my major testimony that we have never, God has helped us and sustained us throughout, that we have never gone to see anybody like that. We have just hung on God, even no matter how the pressure we've been, God has sustained us with the grace, with a powerful grace. I have a very understanding husband. Many times I will cry. He will tell me that I should not worry. That if the Lord can take us this far, He definitely will do it for us. There are many homes that people that have had for out of. That I mean, after a few years of marriage, because they don't have children, their marriage break up. You know. But when 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 I see these such things, I I you know I get very emotional. I go to my husband and I tell him that hey, what, how do you think this will work? Tell me I should not worry, you know. I remember there was a time early in the morning I left the house. I didn't know I packed my bag. This is the first time I'm even seeing it. I packed my bag into the car and I went to my father's house. Very early in the morning and I went to daddy. And I entered his room and I said, daddy, 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 I want to die. He said, what happened? Why? I want to die. Everybody has their children. This is, I think, like almost six years or seven years staying in marriage. That only me, I don't have any child. And you know, in my father's and my husband's house, I don't think they have any case like that. So mine was a very unique one. I enter my mom's room, I enter his room, and I just say, Daddy, I want to die. I want to die. I just want to die. I'm not going back to my husband's house. I say, ah, what is wrong with you? What happened? I said, because I don't have a child yet. He just looked at me. He said, well, I take it easy. You will have your own baby soon. And you know, after he talked to me, after about an hour or two, I went back home. My husband never knew that I packed my bag into the book that when I left the house. You know, by the time I got home, 
it has gone to work and I just enter back into the house. You know, and you know, it has not been easy at all. And you know, when you are expectant like that, when you are believing God for a child, even when they are not talking to you, you think they are referring to you. Hmm? When, when somebody says something that doesn't really even have thought or affect you at all, you think it is you they are talking to. They may be talking to you, you, you know, you may react in a wrong way. Uh, we even got a doctor that told us that we should just stop doing anything, that it is hopeless, uh, that it is only God that can help us. And we, yes, we, we knew it's only God, you know, but even going through all these things, it helped us to, especially for women, you know, you, they can, you cannot just stay without doing anything like that. Along the way, I think we we're actually going to another church. I just spoke to my wife, I said, well, we might not have another chance of looking at Koza. Let's just branch and see what they're doing. Actually, it was out of curiosity, uh, you know. I've been in ministry too, so a lot of things I've been hearing. So it was an opportunity to, to hear Pastor Biodon preach for the first time. And I just took it. We were actually going to another church entirely. I never knew that was the beginning of a good thing in my life. We are people that are very sensitive to things of the Spirit. When we entered, you know, there was this, this atmosphere. The spiritual balancing, you know, that was there. What caught me and brought me to tears was the atmosphere. It was terrific. I saw young people, elderly people, everybody. And I saw on their faces joy. And, and I told my wife, man, this could only be God. There is no other place to be. The Spirit of the Lord there made the difference. And it was just perfect for us. And since that day, we could not leave again. After the first time that we came to church, you know, there was this excitement to come to church the second week. In fact, I came for the uh, for the midweek service. I was there, you know, things changed generally for me. I was ironing my clothes that I, I was speaking it the day before. Things that have never happened before, you know, that I was just excited to go to church. And the second week, the word came. Pastor Bjordan was preaching. And it got to a point, he started prophesying. He said a lot of things, actually, prophesying. But you know, it was the second thing he said that I remembered very well. He said, Sarah sent me to you. Anybody, uh, I think he was talking about, if you are barren, the barren, Sarah sent me to you. That you should not worry that God is there for you. God is going to make it happen for you. And that was my message that day. Every other thing ceased. I can't even remember the message again, any other thing again. I was just waiting because my wife didn't come to church. So I was just waiting to take the message home. And I told her, I said, this is what came from the halter. But I want to appreciate God that that same week, if I'm to count back to the time I conceived, that the Lord did this miracle for me, it will be about nine months that I conceived and I gave back. So I'm trying to tell you that, you know, nothing happens by coincidence. Um, she has been pregnant once before uh, that um, we had a miscarried. Uh, she had a miscarried and uh, it, was, it was very devastating, you know. I've been waiting for like 10 years or so and you got pregnant and the thing came down. So the, the anxiety and the pressure now got doubled. Uh, will this come down? Will this also stay? I could have conceived and uh, miscarried. Anything could have happened. But you know, I tapped into the faithfulness of God in Koza. I remember this first Sunday service, we, 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 we Thanksgiving service, first Thanksgiving service there. When I just saw people, when they called for, I think people to appreciate God in, um, when you are, you are expecting something and you are to appreciate God, in expectancy, I, and I saw people trooping out. That's it. That's that's. I will not look at them. You know, and I said, God, if this is how they do it, Father, please do my own too. Let me let me come out here. I'm going to join them next month, so that I will pray every month for the baby in my womb to for covenant, so that I will not miscarry. You know, so that I will be able to carry them to ten and give. Back. So that I will be coming out every first one like that, dancing in expectancy of the next month and you know god god has been faithful and they wrapped up their expectations with faith in god and god sustained the pregnancy
I want to appreciate God that after 11 years and 5 months of marriage, I was able to conceive and have my own babies. Not just a baby, He gave me double for my trouble. God gave us not just a twin, it was a boy and a girl. You know, by traditionally everything, it, just, it was as if it was packaged, specially. The boy came out first, so if you want a child, if it is traditional, whatever, you have a child, a son as a firstborn. A lovely girl as a second. It was amazing. It was amazing. Please believe me, I would never doubt you. Oh, I would do. But you know, I have gotten to that level that first day I can stay, second, third, fourth, ten, eleven. I know. I will stand with this God. And I stood with him. And he has sat me this way. Mm -mm. And my greatest miracle that happened to me in Koza. It's not even, yes, the child is one of the greatest things that can happen to me. But what happened to me most is, is the connection that I now have with God. The level of my trust, the words that I had, that I'm hearing, the level of my trust in God, just, you know, just move from like her to something, something very heavy. The messages are my miracle, you know, they, they Position, those messages have placed me. They are the miracles I have. I've never really had a contact with Pastor B or Mommy D. But the grace of God upon their lives has worked for me, even by just looking at them. If you are in an atmosphere where God is working, I want you to trust Him. He, the delay is always to make things special. If you, are, if you are picked for a miracle, you will go through a process. And I think that is what is happening to you. Just be happy. Don't deprive yourself of your joy. Just know that God is there. He's there. Anytime, He's there. And it will meet you. It will surprise you. I, I want to, first of all, appreciate the family of Koza. Because my first contact was not, the, the, my first spiritual contact with Koza was not even with the pastor. It was with the atmosphere. The atmosphere that was created, the joy that I saw in people, it was real. And I cannot but just thank Reverend Biodo. I just want to appreciate God for his life. And uh, he is a true man of God and I want him to just know that he has touched so many lives. And that is a great responsibility. And I pray that God will continue to sustain me. Because now he has not only touched my life. If he has touched only me, that means he has touched my family. Another two has added to his responsibility. I cannot but also appreciate uh, Mommy D. She has been a great woman, a very good role model for women. Uh, her prayer life is also touching. The way he prays with scriptures, and you cannot but just blessed and I pray also that God will sustain God will sustain her I celebrate you so much sir I celebrate you so much man. the Lord bless you